Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today we are talking about Triangle Borea BR-03 speakers. That's something that I think some of you have been asking me to review and luckily for both you and me I met an acquaintance that was willing to borrow his pair to me for testing. And I had these for several days now, so let me share my impressions with you. So let me start with uh, saying that I'll basically completely skip the spec part because these are not new on the market and you probably have read many reviews or listened many reviews and also you can just look at the spec sheet and see their size, driver units, sizes and weight, things like that. And basically the only thing that I believe is worth repeating is that these are fairly sensitive speakers, especially for a small bookshelf, which they basically are. And that means that they're not as demanding on your amplifier. They do not require as much power to wake them up as some other similarly sized speakers. It's good to know that you don't need a powerhouse to drive them. They will work just fine with any decent amplifier. So when you're pairing these, think about quality of the amp and not about quantity, not about how many watts that amp possesses. I'll get back to the pairing part just a little bit later after we have talked about the sound and tonality of these speakers first. So let's start. So first thing that captivated me with tr these triangles is how dynamic and engaging they sound. And to be perfectly honest here, I didn't expect that from a 400 US dollars or euros speaker. I was expecting more of a flat, more of a sedated kind of sound, but I was wrong and I'm so happy I was because their sound is lively, it's engaging, it's full of rhythm and pace, and it's also kind of forward. It's put out there towards the listener, towards you, and it just grabs your attention. So let's start with that. Let's start with the sound stage. As I've mentioned, their presentation is slightly forward and they're definitely creating that sensation of musicians are in your room. They're in between the speakers and close to you, like embodied in your room. And not all speakers do that. Some of them make deeper and more laid back sound stage that feels like there is space behind the speakers and everything is farther away from you, more laid back. It's like you're sitting in a 12th row on a concert. With these, it's like you're in a second or third row. And I have to admit that I do like that kind of present presentation. For example, I liked it in CAF LS50s. Those are speakers that I've used for several years and I loved. They had that same type of pushing forward towards the listener kind of thing going on. But if you think that triangles cannot do soundstage depth, you would be mistaken. Okay, they're not champions in making the soundstage as deep as it possibly could be, but when you think of that forward presentation and imaging starting relatively close to you and in between the speakers, there's like a decent area in which they can put vocals and instruments. For example, vocal is most forward to you. It's really big and present in the room. And then they can layer and make something a little bit further away and then something that's in the back of the recording even further away. It will never be as deep as with some speakers that are excelling in that but you do have a decent range of depth from that first tone that's most forward to that last one that's in the back. And in my opinion, it's deep enough to make a believable sound stage that has reasonably satisfying depth scaling 
in that area that's not pushed far back. And then speaking about other dimensions, like width and height, both of these are pretty decent and pretty good, especially when you consider the size of the speaker and its price point. Basically, I think that these triangles are creating one of the biggest sound stages that I've ever encountered below 1000 US dollars or euros price point. The only competitor that's doing that big sound stage and probably even slightly bigger that comes to mind uh, is Klipsch RP600M. Those create even bigger, more diffused sound stage, but they're not as focused and as precise and also not as neutrally balanced as these triangles. Triangles have more seamless, smooth transition between the baseline and the mid-range and highs than those clips. Clips feels like baseline and the upper sections are not as well connected, like they're coming from a slightly different speakers. That's something that bothered me. And I talked about that in my Clip Sharpie 600 m review, so I'm not going to drag that too much today. But in my opinion and to my ears, BRO3 does sound more natural and more focused. It's, it's not as diffused as those clips. It's more focused and the integration of the whole frequency spectrum is better. It's more seamless, it's more natural. And this is actually a nice chance for me to talk about that tonality and frequency response of these speakers. So starting with the bass line, I just love it. I have to say that I've never heard more dynamic, more engaging, lively, punchy bass line coming from a speaker of this price. Some are equally weighty and authoritative, some are equally fast and precise, but I think that the combination of having authority, having weight, and also being able to move that baseline quickly and dynamically and in a punchy, kicky, slammy manner, that these triangles have no competition nowhere near their price range. Their baseline is just so satisfying, full, yet agile, that I was genuinely thrilled when I tried them first. Then we have mid-bass. Again, authoritative, full, it's wielded with power and force and precision. It's not bloated in any way. Um, I do not feel that it colors the mid-range, but I don't know, it's just the right amount of bass and mid-bass and they're so well controlled and have energy. I seriously do believe that these speakers are setting a standard below 1000 euros or dollars for how a bass line, complete bass line, including mid-bass, upper bass, should behave and how it should enrich the whole sound. And that great impression continues with how seamless transition from the bass line to the mid-range is. It's simply well done and, and inconspicuously seamlessly done, so vocals sound prominent and present and they have body, they have energy and, and, and realistic weight behind those vocals. And it's the completely same story for instruments. They again have decent amount of weight and body and they feel believable in space, but things do get a little bit rough once we start listening to the higher registers. And, and that starts from like upper mid-range, that really, really high mid-range and goes into the highs a little bit. This is a highly resolving speaker. Transients are quick, they're also energetic. String plucks, for example, they have really good energy and, and really good resolution, but there is something to, to the sound of that upper 
frequency part that's just a little bit rough and a little bit edgy. And the thing is that it's a little bit noticeable if you pair these speakers with a very neutral sounding amp and very neutral sounding sources. You'll notice that they're a little bit brighter and peakier, sharper in those upper registers than it would be ideal. So I'll quickly uh, talk about pairing because I feel this is a natural place to be talking about it. When I connected these triangles to my own Acoustic Invader preamp and amp combo, that, that's a clear overkill for these speakers. That's around 7,000 US dollars combo and it's pretty darn neutral sounding, rich sounding, but neutral sounding, very informative. I noticed that triangles are a little bit brighter and sparklier and peakier in that upper section than I would call neutral, but it doesn't truly bother me. I would call that sound a little bit livelier and brighter, sparklier, as I said, than a normal, but I can still listen to that. But then the, the choice of my source actually dictated if that brightness will be a problem or not. For example, if I used Leather Schumann R2R DAC, I found that to be quite okay and full sounding. But if I used another R2R DAC, Gustard R26, that's slightly airier and slightly brighter and more detailed than the previous one, with these triangles, that would tilt the word brightness a little bit more than I thought it's ideal. Then a uh, really good integrated amp that I have here, Atoll, 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 I'm not sure how it's pronounced, in 100. This is a pretty, pretty good integrated amp. It's, it's made in France, it's powerful and I'll talk about it in a separate review, but it costs 1100 euros and it's really, really capable, highly detailed, highly revealing, but a little bit brighter up top. Pairing this amp with these speakers is not a good idea because having one slightly brighter component and then adding another that's also slightly brighter, you have double the brightness and it's just too bright and too aggressive in that region and it hijacks the tonality and you're always going to pay attention to that part of the spectrum, to those high frequencies more, you'll probably lack body and juice from the sound. That's just not something that I would recommend. Unfortunately, uh, an acquaintance that gave these triangles to me for a loan is also the one that gave me this Atoll amp. And this is his system. And he also noticed that this is not an ideal combination. It's just more peaky and brighter in that section than he would like to. So I'm not the only one that noticed that he agrees with me. But if you pair these speakers correctly, they are truly awesome. And for example, here I have the latest Rega Brio amp. This is a small, as you can see, shoebox format, but this is a really good amp that comes from Britain. And it is slightly warmer sounding, juicier sounding, and uh, uh, kind of tame up top. And I'm not sure if you have seen that review, but if you have my review of Irman Traduto DAC that I really liked, I felt it's juicy and bassy and very, very musical and slightly tamer up top, but it creates this full bodied, lush, enjoyable musical sound. It's a very similar story with this amp. And maybe if it's mixed with also warm, juicy, fatty sounding speakers that might not be good. But with these triangles, oh, it's just so good sounding for my ears. These two make magic. The, the, this combination has everything. It has enjoyable bass line, punchy bass line, rhythm, pace. 
It has juicy mid-range. It has just enough liveliness and sparkle up top to be really attractive and engaging, but a slightly tamer nature of this amp is not letting slightly livelier nature of these speakers to actually annoy you or to be noticeable. So pairing is really, really important, guys. And if you're maybe asking something like, why would I buy slightly brighter speakers and then think, worry about which amp I get when I can just buy a neutral sounding set of speakers? And the answer would be because everything else that's not connected to that slight treble peakiness is so great with these speakers that you can try, but it's hard to find a set of speakers costing somewhere around that price that does everything else as well as these triangles. So for example, very highly praised Q Acoustics 3030i costs are roughly the same. And I have to be honest here, I didn't particularly like those speakers. They are highly revealing, they are warm sounding in the bass line, but they also do have emphasis on the upper mid-range part. And even more, they sound slightly dryish through the mid-range section. I think these triangles are livelier, they're juicier, they're more engaging overall, whereas 3030i is more laid back sounding in terms of sound staging. It goes more into the depth, not as forward, not as engaging with the listener. That's not a scene, by the way, that's a preference. You can as well enjoy sound stage that's laid back and further behind the speakers, that's okay. But they're also dynamically more sedated. They're just flatter sounding overall. When there is like big dynamic swings, triangles will do that better and with more force, with more energy. Then the overall frequency spectrum feels more seamlessly connected and as one with triangles than with those Q acoustics that in my opinion have full and warm bass line but that warmth is not extended into the mid-range, that's slightly dry. I was surprised that not so many reviewers talked about that, but when I reviewed Q Acoustics and I said that, many viewers said, wow, yeah, that's what I'm hearing, that's what's bothering me. And even with their slight peakiness and brightness in, in, in the highs, I still feel that triangles are more seamlessly integrating baseline, mid-bass, mid-range than those Q acoustics. Another speaker that I really loved, ELAC B5.2, it's not actually a direct comparison with these speakers. 6.2 would be a much more fair game. I loved ELACs, they're, they're very neutral, very revealing. However, they are not as engaging and as dynamic as these triangles. They're great speakers, especially because their price is lower. I have nothing bad to say about Elex. I love them, but these are just more jumpy, more forward, more engaging. And I think it's worth it to tend to their slightly brighter, peakier treble and choose pairing more carefully to get all of that liveliness and dynamics into your system. And lastly, we have Klipsch RP600M that is really dynamic, engaging, exciting sounding speaker, but its bass line is not as good as on triangles. It's a little bit warmer, a little bit hazier, not as well defined as with triangles. Also, there is a gap between the bass line and the mid-range in those clips, and you're aware that two different drivers are covering the frequency spectrum. There is slightly different, warmer, hazier tonality to the bass line, and then sharper, drier, 
tonality to the mid range and highs, and I was just not a big fan of that. But outside of that integration, clips are creating huge sound stage. They're highly engaging. They're probably only speakers that I've heard in, in this price range that, that can match triangles in terms of dynamics and sound stage and even slightly surpass them, probably creating slightly bigger wall of sound. But that wall of sound is not as well focused and as well etched and arranged as with triangles. I feel that Klipsch is, is diffusing the sound a little bit. Everything is bigger, but it's not as well focused and as well as clear, clearly outlined and separated as with triangles. Klipsch is just diffusing like a bigger picture on a bigger canvas, but at a slightly lower, hazier resolution. So personally, I do prefer triangles again. And lastly, maybe it's a good comparison to mention my CAF LS50s. Those are the OGs from 2012, not the new meta version. Because those older original LS50s can now be purchased secondhand for roughly the same price as you would buy new triangles. So I think it's an interesting comparison. That is the first speaker, in my opinion, that can actually stop the, the great triangle. And I do think that LS50 is slightly more neutral sounding. And some people even consider that one to be peaky and brighter than it should. But in general, LS50 does not feel as bright in highs as triangle here. It does push the whole mid-range slightly upwards and it's very open and airy sounding speaker, but this one has more edge to, to, to its highs. And it's, it, it sounds even slightly brighter than LS50. Other than that, their baseline and overall dynamics and sound stage size are pretty much comparable, which is a great place for these triangles to be at. Because being mostly comparable to LS50s that used to cost more than twice the price in their day is a good place to be in. So yes, in general, I still do prefer LS50 a slightly more neutral sounding speaker, but it's also less sensitive. It's 85 dB speaker and LS50 is always so hungry for power. And with amps that are going to be realistically paired with those kind of speakers. If you, for example, buy a new triangle or secondhand LS50s, you're probably not going to spend thousands and thousands on amplification. In that case, I actually think that with moderately priced components, these triangles may sound better. For example, I preferred their sound with Rega Brio than LS50's sound with Rega Brio. Triangles just came alive, whereas LS50's needed even more power. They needed my Class D amp that's really powerful to really come alive. So being realistic about pairing and about which components are you actually going to use with these speakers? I think triangles might, might even have an edge here. And that basically leads me to the conclusion of this video. What we have here are speakers that are 95% awesome. They're pure awesomeness, dynamic sounding, easily driven, engaging. A uh, really nice frequency integration from, from the baseline to highs, but they're 5% tricky with those highs that are peaky, brighter, and more demanding when it comes to pairing. But in my opinion, all of those 95% of goodness and greatness are worth it. Just 
pay some attention to pairing, have amps that are not bright and peaky, use sources that are not bright and peaky, and you'll get the sound from these speakers that I still have to hear anywhere near their price. They're just so good that it will be worth it pampering them a little bit and, and matching the, the rest of the gear to them. They are worth it, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm giving them all this praise without Triangle or anybody else even paying me to do that. I like, the, the, I'm just gonna stop. Stop, man. So that would be all for today, guys. I hope you like this video. Comment, subscribe, like, become a patron. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.